Well, good morning, and thank you for coming to my garden. My name's Alice, and I'm delighted to be able to show you my little piece of heaven, as I call it. My backyard is my haven. Spent hours and hours and hours here. So as you come in, you'll notice that I have two major things that dominate my garden, and one is this rock garden, which um, I planted with seedlings which are totally maintenance free. I just love it. I have to do the odd, the odd weed, but nothing more than that. And it's, uh, it's just kind of distinctive. I like it, yeah. So please come in, follow me. My little gold mound spireas here, which I just love. They do get high, so they've been clipped down. And now they're just going to rebloom again for the second time have a little Japanese maple in there that's very new. Uh, it survived the winter, so I think we're home free. My little tomato plants. I think I'm gonna get about 12 tomatoes all told. Not sure whether it's worth the effort. <laughs> anyway, please come in. The other thing that dominates my backyard, I have an above ground swimming pool in this area. Actually, I should say an on-ground. It actually went into the ground about five feet. Uh, so the first summer I was here, I uh, rented a jackhammer and enlisted my family's help and we got rid of all the sides. It actually follows the pattern of this rock. So it's about five feet deep in, in the middle. Lots of room for lots of soil to go in. And uh, I had about a uh, hundred plants from my previous garden, even though I moved here the end of January, so it wasn't the optimum time to be moving plants. But that's the reason it's a round garden. It was a round pool. So come in and I'll show you a few things. This delightful little yarrow or achillea turned out to be much higher than it was last year. But you know, I love it. I see it from my deck. And so I'm not going to move it. I'm going to leave it just where it is, but I love it. It's called Cerise Queen. And a nice big uh, white swan uh, echinacea there in the back. And a few other colors. So cover, keep coming along. We'll just show you what we've got here. And I don't know all the names like Joan does. However, I'll do my best. <laughs> in fact, I've got one here that I do know the name of because it's so unusual. This is a, a, a daisy, leucanthemum, and it's called Fiona Coghill. How is that for a name? Anyway, come on in. This is another delightful little uh, daisy, a leucanthemum, and it's called banana cream, as in pie. Love it. I have quite a few day lilies. Most of them aren't out at this time of the morning, um, and also the phlox is just coming out. In the background, I have my dappled willow, which if it didn't get pruned, it would be 15 feet high by 15 feet wide by now. It just grows very aggressively. But when I prune it, it keeps, uh, it keeps in, it's manageable. And it has the lovely three colored leaves in the spring, green, uh, white, and a beautiful soft peach color. So it's quite delightful. Off on the back in my fence, that's a bittersweet. I've had it about probably 10 or 11 years, and only in the last three years have I actually got uh, berries on it. Yep, come on, move right in, because I want to show you a couple of things up close. This delightful little plant, it's a pain in, <laughs> pain in the neck in many ways because <coughs> It's, it's a campanula, it's called a peach leaf campanula. And it needs to be deadheaded very frequently, such as right here. But if you do deadhead it, it'll bloom for months on end. It'll bloom from June, middle, end of June, right up until fall. So I kind of work at it. I have a few little things in here. I have liatris. This is a new sedum, it's called Pure Joy. It remains very low. It's going to be covered with very bright pink flowers. So it's really quite delightful. I just got this last summer on a, on a little road trip that some of the other gals from the Hort Society went on with me. Back in here, and I'm going to need to weed this out soon because 
my uh, Black Eyed Susans are taking over. But I have a little Batista, which normally is has blue flowers, and that's it, its name. It's, it's called False Indigo. But this one's called Lemon Meringue. So now I've got two names of pie, banana cream and lemon meringue. I think that tells you I like desserts. <laughs> I've got a few uh, milkweed here, and I'm uh, trying to maintain my little um, uh, little source of water with the rock in it so that the butterflies can land there. And I have seen the monarchs flying around. This lovely little plant is almost past its peak, but it's called Philopendula and um, Queen of the Prairie is its uh, name and since I was born on the prairie so it seems like a, an appropriate name. So we've got a tall Becky back there, the, uh, the, the um, Shasta Daisy as well. More daylilies coming, flocks just coming along. Uh, things like um, uh, Siberian Iris and that sort of thing were in here originally. There's a nice dark sedum in the back here with uh, sort of darker stems and um, uh, the, the leaves are even edged in, uh, in, in red, dark red. And I always, as, as every gardener will always tell you, I always want to keep moving things, but somehow they never seem to get moved. They seem to stay there from year to year, year to year. However, it's the labor thing. It's a labor of love. So of course, my, the other thing I love in my garden, I have three lots of the Carl Forrester grass, which I love the, the vertical uh, aspect that that lends to the garden. And of course, there's motion, constant motion when you have that sort of thing, and that complements to the willow, which is always in, always in motion as well. Yeah, so this is my, my seniors planter that I enter every year in my competition. It was a piece of, um, this is something that my husband built for me. It was very, he was very uh, handy. He built our, two of our houses. The last thing he built before he was, became very ill with cancer. So this has always been very special. I, I like to overwinter things. I overwintered my diplodenia. Very slow to, to come along when you overwinter it yourself overwintered like, I don't know, 40 geraniums, I think, overwintered this gorgeous uh, trailer, which is called Crassus, very prolific, uh, a little hard to get started, but um, um, makes a lovely addition, just tumbles over the edge. So you can see I spend many an hour here looking out over my garden. It's so peaceful. I have birdhouses out there with a little family of vireos that are just starting to do their second nesting, actually have um, Orioles that come into my garden. I put out a feeder for them, of course. So let me show you the other half of my garden, my, uh, my deck over here, because I spend, this is where I spend most of my time. My brother-in-law built my pergola for me, and I put fabric up on the roof to give me some sun relief, and that, that means that I can spend hours out of here without being cooked. To this face is the south. It would be extremely, extremely hot out here. My Jack Mandii clematis is a little past its best, but still gives me a lovely burst of color. And then over here is the honeysuckle. It's finished, of course, but that also gives me a great deal of color. I should also tell you about this interesting shrub over here. This is a Korean Barbary which started with a little six inch uh, clipping that I was given by one of the girls in the Kingston Hort Society who plants trees out at Lemoyne Point. So this little wee thing has grown. I had it at my other house, I brought it here. And as you can see, it does grow quite rambunctiously. That's been trimmed just about two weeks ago and now it's sending up new growth as well. But it, it, it's different. It, it gives me a little bit of uh, privacy for my neighbors and, um, and it's just kind of unique as well. So now I'd like to show you my shade garden. The uh, dynamic of this has changed a little bit because I had to have three, actually two large um, ash trees taken out and one smaller tree 
just this past fall, which means a lot more sun is coming in, but in many ways that's a good thing. I think it's really going to help my Annabelle uh, hydrangeas here. But I want to show you my focal point of my garden. Ta -da! I love my Sun King Aurelia. Mm. The color of that is fabulous. I can see it from the house. Even, in, uh, even at dusk, it's still absolutely beautiful. It actually has a nice little white flower, quite an airy little flower that comes out a little bit later too. So in this garden, of course, it's being a shade garden, it's all texture and, sh and shades of green. So I've intermixed a few of, a few more of the geraniums that I overwintered, because I like to see that from the house. That gives me a little bit of, um, uh, just a little spark of color here and there. But we've got the usual hostas, of course. Um, one thing I'm very fond of is goat's beard. I have three kinds of goat's beard. The big tall one back there in the middle. Its plumes have finished, so I've cut them off. This is a smaller one, but it has lovely foliage. And I have a very tiny one in here somewhere. Over there it is. So goat's beards, because they send up that beautiful plume, sort of a triangular shaped plume, um, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So here's one of my <laughs> smaller flower stalks. This is going to be four feet tall, the stalks on this, uh, on this uh, lovely hosta. And in front of them I have um, Hakone grass. Joan knows how to pronounce it properly, I don't, so I call it its easy name, Hakone. And that picks up the color in the hosta in this and of course in my Sun King Aurelia. This is Glaucomole, so it has um, this color is in the center. A few other little hostas, coral bells. And then I had a few extras, these little goblins, so I stuck those in, little goblin gallardias. Uh, what else have we got down here? Of course, this is, uh, this purple thing is sort of my fun color. You know, I have it here. I have it in a bird bath, I have it in a little bedstead over there, I have a little mirror on the shed. So that's kind of my fun color. Got some painted ferns in here as well, uh, several kinds of brunera, uh, pulmonaria, ladies mantle, and then I have another of these lovely Sun King Aurelias. This one was out in the front yard, but since my tree has been cut down, it was cooking. It was actually getting brown spots on it, big brown spots. So it just got moved a couple of weeks ago and it seems to be settling in. And of course this is my my weeping mulberry. I planted this in memory of my, my mom and dad because they were avid gardeners. And this is the fruited variety. So it actually has fruit on it, uh, like little raspberries and the birds love it. When, when, it's, um, when they're ripe, the birds are just flocking in. So one thing I wanted to mention to you, I'm, I'm a real hydrangea nut. I love hydrangeas. So I have my original old Annabelle, which has come from house to house to house with me. This is another one of my favorite hydrangeas. This is called Quickfire, and it blooms one whole month ahead of all the others. And it has a very unique bloom. It's so flat, and yet it's so dramatic and beautiful. I really, I really love it. But I love the fact that it comes out in July instead of in August, like the others. Then I have another one of my, my favorite limelight. This is like my standard in the backyard but of course this is a full shrub form and its lime will really accent and play up my whopper hydrangea or sorry pasta i usually enter this in one of the uh, flower shows the one in the fall and it nearly always does quite well because it is so gigantic and the color is so vibrant and it also plays off well just against the good old yew which of course this faces north, so it's the perfect planting for a northern exposure. Mm. Okay, and then we'll walk 
around to the front. Good, so this is the front of my yard, which has changed tremendously since I had a tree removed last fall. It was a Norway maple, which was starting to lose its branches, as they do. It was the messiest tree that's ever been put on the face of the earth. It's actually on the invasive species list because of all the droppings. It has keys that come down four times a year, uh, more leaves than you can shake a stick at. Anyway, it's changed the dynamic of my garden, especially in this area. However, this little area is still surviving. I have a, another one of these quick fires, but this is called little quick fire, so it won't get as big but it's already, it's been out even longer than the one around the corner because it gets a little bit, it gets a lot more sun now. And uh, another one of my favorite yews. And you know, this creeping jenny, most people consider it a weed, and it is a weed, but I love the color. It fits in with the, you know, a hydrangea or a hosta here, and uh, this is my favorite too. This is another one of my favorite hydrangeas. This is a phantom. It will grow eight, uh, six to eight feet. Maybe it's eight to ten. It's one of the tallest and I wanted it tall because of two-story house. It has a beautiful cone-shaped but very open um, flower head on it. Very lacy, absolutely beautiful. It will just be covered by the end of August. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful hydrangea, but one of the biggest ones. So then we go around the corner to one of my favorite little flowers, which is the balloon flower. Needs a lot of deadheading. That's the only problem. The, the spent blooms look awful, but I love the color. It's absolutely beautiful. And as we move along, what else would I have but petunias. And this is bubblegum petunias. This is our color that we've got in our Hort Park this year. I've got some more of that bright greeny yellow that I love so much up against the Barbary, that sun glow. And that grass back there is a native grass actually. It's little blue stem. And uh, I have a few new things in here. Um, you can hardly see it, but back in here I have a false, a dwarf false cypress, which I just got this year. It looks a little bit like a cedar, but it's going to become quite lovely and moundy and um, has this lovely waterfall appearance to it. So I think it's going to be a lovely addition to my garden when it gets a little bit bigger. I also have a very a new sedum in here. This is called Carl, just like a man's name, Carl. And apparently it's, it's, it's sort of competition for autumn joy, but even pinker. So I'm really looking forward to seeing it come out. That's right back in there. So we've got another one of my favorite hydrangeas. This is called Little Lamb, which I love the name. It'll never get too big. Uh, this year, especially, it's loaded with blooms. So one of my favorites. I think I have eight, eight different kinds of um, hydrangeas and I love every one of them. In behind that is a, um, a nine bark and it's called Golden Nugget. And it really looks like a forsythia in the spring. It's even more yellow in the, in the early part of the spring. And on the end, uh, anchored, my bed is sort of anchored with the uh, autumn, uh, sorry, the rose glow Barbary again. And there's an ornamental grass. I find if I have room, I just stick things in and see how they do. See if I like them. So this is, this is, my, this is my garden. Um, I'm so pleased that you were able to come and visit me. Mm -hmm. And um, I wish you well. Keep safe. And uh, thank you for coming.